Well, it's Christmas, and let's talk uh, how best to celebrate Christmas. As Nigerians observe Christmas holiday, Christians are being advised to operate within their earnings to avoid paying for huge debt after the celebrations. This is the uh, well, these are the views of a cross section of Yanogwa residents in the spirit of the yearly ritual. Doris Akumoi reports. Christmas comes with lots of celebration which compel people to prepare and plan ahead of the yearly celebration. Consequently, the craze for the season has seen people do all in their powers to ensure they meet up with demands arising from home fronts and other engagements. This no doubt has led some to spend more than they earn and even borrow to meet this needs. If there is money, if you have the money, you can do it. But if the money is not there, it's for the children to go back to school. January is the most important thing, not to go and take loan because of clothing. Like me, I don't do that. It's good to make the children happy, but uh, not to the extent of borrowing. Because you consider that by January, there is school fees to pay. Children will always want their children to put on new clothes at all costs. Even though the money is not there, they will go all out to make sure that they get the money to buy for their children. Others encourage a policy of self-contentment in order not to run into unnecessary pressure as Christmas comes yearly. How some parents died, they died prematurely because of high blood pressure. Because when the demand is too much, eh, they, they will be thinking and thinking and how uh, high blood pressure. You look at where you are coming from and where you are going, especially your family background. You, know, you must cut your coat according to your size. The stress and need for all to reach out to the needy and the spirit of the season. In Yenegoa, Doris Akomonye, NCN. Well, dealers of livestock are maximizing the festive season to stock the market with animal products and birds that are in high demand. A Swali livestock and poultry market in Yanogwa, Bayelsa, state becomes readily available to meet the demands of buyers. The festive period comes along with a whole lot of funfare, eating and merry-go-round. It is in anticipation of the high demand of livestock that dealers against all arts, transverse and states and regions have stopped the swally ultra-modern livestock market here in Yenagwada Bios State Capital with their produce. Alaji Bubuka has been in this business for over a decade. You go buy and go bush market. After they are from village market, you go carry and come home. The trailer where they can diesel last year, na 600, now one one ten. You get the one by Medugu State. You get the one by Yobe State. You get the one by Bosch State. You get the one by Ziga State. Embarking on these distance journeys with livestock is cost effective and energy sapping. Sometimes we see challenge police, they are full road, where we see the trailer go to the car and they will run something then they, it is a full road. Because they will step by step within the pass. Because before we reach this side, from Sokoto, we will cross like six states. As another state party man then the daily, as another state party man then the high. And the sick boys they the worry. All these ones then they road, they don't block road. So now I'm like, anything we will bring to the cost way away. These have affected the prices of a goat that sold for 20 to 40,000 naira now goes between 55 to 180,000 naira, depending on the size and breed, while ram goes from 120,000 to 300,000 naira. I actually came to this place last year by this time to buy goods and the price is way 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 cheaper than what's happening now you can see the other one i'm trying to buy that's fifty thousand but last year we bought that good i think twenty eight thousand then let them bring down the fair price to normal from there things will be better the poultry market is not different as the prices of chicken have soared been in this business for 12 years now but this year the way it is 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 very high because this chicken now this particular one now last year we saw this six thousand but now it's eight thousand these parents buy right now so that's year is ten thousand why this year is sixteen thousand it's okay i said um, 20 for the female then why i said 30 for the male 
Uh, the period is December time, so everything needs to raise up. After December, everything needs to calm down. The way you see, we buy it like that. That's what we are living in Nigeria. Despite the high cost, dealers are hopeful that as the hours go by, they'll make more sales. After all, it is the season and partakers are willing to make the best out of it. In Yenakwa, Ebinimi Zitimiola, NTN News. Well, the, uh, it is said that the Nigerian textile industry is yet to pick up in terms of operations, despite over $1.18 billion uh, pumped into the sector. Investigation has revealed the president uh, that, I mean, has revealed that now the uh, President Bola Ahmetinubu ad, 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 administration, like previous governments, is being confronted with the challenges of uh, reviving the textile industry, particularly in northern Nigeria, where the sector has the potential to create jobs and mitigate problems of insecurity. The global textile industry is valued at $920 billion and is expected to grow to $1.23 trillion uh, dollars by 2024, with China, the United States of America, the European Union, and India dominating the market. Other players include Turkey, uh, South Korea, Taiwan, and Pakistan. Our focus on the program is reviving Nigeria's textile uh, sector and generating foreign uh, exchange. Director General, Nigerian Textile Manufacturers Association, Hama Kwajafa is my guest. You're welcome to Business Express. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start by you telling us that the position of the textile sector in the country. Um, the textile sector generally has been facing a lot of uh, competitive challenges. Uh, we are not competitive, we cannot export, and we cannot sell locally. Uh, the Chinese products have filled up our markets locally, and uh, due to poor infrastructure and other challenges, we are not able to export. Because uh, you wouldn't be able to export when the infrastructure uh, costs are high, overhead cost is high, and um, you find out that you cannot meet up in the international arena. Therefore, you may be forced to come back with your goods if you are not able to sell anything. So that's why most of our industrialists have uh, just come, come down for now, and they are not able to export, and they are not also able to sell in the domestic market. So that's, that's what causes a lot of uh, closure of our textile industry. We've seen how Proton and Gambler has closed uh, all the Dunlop tires, what have you. We've gone to Ghana where there's an enabling environment. Our enabling environment is poor, and uh, something drastically has to be done to enable us to compete in the uh, African Free Trade Area Agreement. And uh, if we don't do that, uh, something will be done. So something will be difficult for us to compete even within Africa. So we call on the government. So that be before we, we do the calling and everything, yes. uh, you talk about uh, the African continental free trade area. Yes. Now, when you look at the global textile industry, it's said to be worth over $920 billion. Exactly. Why are we not taking advantage of it, considering our population and the value it will bring in terms of foreign exchange earnings? Exactly. That's good. You know, in the past, we had uh, more than 200 textile mills. About uh, 180 have now closed, closed down totally due to challenges of um, uh, infrastructure. And uh, without that, we will not be able to compete in the international market. Many countries have uh, devolved a textile pack to their textile industries. And they're able to compete favorably because government takes care of most of the costs. For instance, now if uh, the dollar has gone up, the government will be able to meet up without tasking the industry to pay at the, at the new, rate, new rate. They'll be able now to cover up what is called subsidy. That's the, what the government do in textile parks in uh, Ethiopia, uh, South Africa, uh, Cairo, and other African countries. Whereby they're able to compete in the international market. Look at Agoa that Obama gave us free of charge to Africa. Nigeria has not been able to participate in Agoa African Growth and Opportunity Act. Most countries in South Africa, uh, 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 East Africa, have been able to benefit a lot. And it has increased their GDP. So uh, what, what do you think the other government is doing? And, and how is the conversation going with the federal government on reviving it? Uh, yeah, this is it. You know, most of the ministers have not sat down. Uh, we are talking with the minister of industry. And uh, I think uh, maybe when she sat down, she can call us for a meeting so that she understands what's happening in the textile industry. Because these challenges are so high, so domain, germane that um, uh, we'll find it difficult to compete anywhere. 
Because okay. look at, for instance, South Africa has 60,000 megawatts of electricity. Nigeria only has 10, and it can only process uh, 4,000. So that's not good for any industrial growth. And once the eight hours is taken off from electricity, our alternative will only be diesel. Diesel price has gone up to the roofs. In the north, we used to have a uh, coconut refinery that would give us uh, black oil. Now, coconut refinery is closed. And uh, it becomes a serious challenge to the industry to be able to proper. So um, a lot of things should be done to this industry particularly to ensure, okay, well, ensure that we come What up. about the state governments? What are they saying about the textile? Uh, textiles, considering it contributes in generating employment. What are they saying? Because uh, uh, there was a time that one of the states is uh, uh, talking about reviving the sector. Yes, thank you very much. I think um, the industry is particularly uh, a mandate of the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment. The state government, I don't think, is the one man mandate to do anything within that area. So the Federal Ministry of Industry shoulders all the responsibility on the industry and they will come contact uh, the executive, uh, federal executive council, or discuss with the presidency on how things can be done differently to ensure that uh, the industry comes up. So this is, has been our hope. Once these, uh, uh, the minister has set it down, uh, this uh, hope we have in the government will be able to uh, trickle, trickle down to the industry so that uh, we can pick up. Now, there was this partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. And, uh, when do we get to see the outcome? Because, uh, uh, I mean, with uh, the last administration uh, thinking of how to, I mean, collaborating with uh, uh, your organization to revive the textile industry. How has it been? Yeah, I think um, that, is, that is another challenge because now the new, new, new Central Bank governor, uh, has said that clearly that he's not going to go into all those partnerships again of the former MFLA uh, assistance to industries. And uh, they, they, I don't think, I don't know why he got the figure of uh, sinking $1.8 billion into textiles. Uh, that was not the textiles. Mostly it has gone to cotton, uh, the raw material. But then before they get to the textiles, uh, the, the, the amount has finished and uh, they have not done much in the textile industry. They are only able to give um, uh, working capital and uh, some funds that can assist uh, the industry generally. But they won't be able to revive any, text, any more bond textile industry up to the time the, the tenure of the former governor ceased. So we hope all these things will be discussed with the Minister of Industry and therefore she can take it up again with the presidency to see what can be done. Because so, the renewed hope is, what is our prayer. If there's renewed hope, it can, should go to industry to employ our people as before. Because uh, textiles has been the second largest employer of, of, uh, of uh, people, second only to government. So I think that thing should continue. And uh, we should go back to the uh, olden days, wherever we employ a large number of Nigerians, and then it should reduce the insecurity we have in this country. I think uh, once the government settles down, they will definitely look into this area to ensure that we come up. So now, w w what does the sector need to get it moving, to get it yeah, working, like I said, the so that we can really uh, get those things? Besides, uh, you, you mentioned the issue of uh, uh, infrastructure. Yes. Uh, what are these infrastructures? But and what does, yes, 40 I mean, what should government policy be like mm -hmm. so that we we'll have a kind of sustainability by the time they are being revived? Yeah. There's what is called the NRP, that's, that's the Federal Government uh, Ministry of Industries uh, policy on how to revive industry. But uh, like you know, most policies are churned out without any implementation. And this has been the challenge seriously in Nigeria that um, uh, policies are not implemented, day in, day out. Before, before you know it, the government has closed down, another one comes in, and uh, another government wants to start afresh. So this uh, has been the dilemma of the implementation of textile of our in policies in this country. So something needs to be done drastically to ensure that we implement all those policies that will help industries grow. Because all these things are enshrined in the policies, but nobody has taken care to implement them. It's not that they don't know, they have it, it's all there. You go there, they will now say the cash backing is not enough and all this in the budget and all that. So we hope that this, this government will, be, will work differently 
Uh, at a point, you, you, you talked about uh, the issue of uh, uh, textiles coming through our borders. Yeah. The, no, the, those are counterfeited ones. Actually, it's our traders that go to China to uh, counterfeit our, de de our designs. And uh, the raw material they use there is polyester and not cotton. In Nigeria, we are forced to go uh, backward integration so, so that we uh, offtake the cotton grown by our farmers. Otherwise, they will lose out of our uh, production totally. So we are forced by through backward integration of the farmers' products. Now in China, they have what is called polyester. In fact, Nigeria, once the refineries are on now, we'll be able to get the polyesters as well. But uh, for now, they can only import. And you know how the foreign exchange has gone up drastically, over 120%. So nobody can be buying all those ones to complicate our further uh, competitiveness that uh, we don't benchmark our country's uh, resources or, uh, or, or, or overheads with, say, Ethiopia, Ethiopia, South Africa, or, Kai, or Egypt. So you see, these are the challenges that we are not benchmarking what we produce in Nigeria. For instance, some people, like Uganda even, sells the electricity at four cents per kilowatt hour. Nigeria is more than 20, 20 cents per kilowatt hour. So how can you compete with even a small country like Ghana, uh, Uganda? Because they ensure that they pay for industry what other countries are doing. And they benchmark with the developed countries. Okay, so, wh while, you're waiting, uh, while you're waiting for the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment to settle, uh, what guarantees can you give us by the time that this particular sector is revived? it will yield the desired uh, uh, impact. I mean, looking at uh, uh, foreign exchange as well as employment generation and uh, revenue for the government. Yes, thank you very much. Because the agenda now is that Nigeria should be able to export our products. We should not just be a consumer nation. So what we, what we advise is that, an appeal to government, is that they should put higher charges on uh, uh, duties imposed on fabrics should be high to ensure that local production is uh, uh, upped and agreed. So once we have production, local production going on, we'll be able to export. But the fact remains that imported fabrics come to Nigeria at free will. Some don't even pay the levy. And they're smuggled into this country. So they are able to sell like five yards of cloth at, uh, at 1,000 naira per five yards, while in Nigerian manufacturers cannot sell at that, at that amount. Once they sell at that amount, it means they will be in charity only and not business. So that's why many of them continue to fall up in that way. Okay, thank you very much, Director General, Nigerian Textile Manufacturers Association, uh, Hamad Kwajafa. Thank you for taking your time to uh, be with us here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Now moving on, the federal government through the Nigerian Geological Survey Agency is articulating a roadmap to address the challenges identified in the mining and metal sectors in the country. Director General of the Nigerian Geological Survey Agency, Dr. Abdul Razak Garba, stated this at the 2023 Forum of the Agency in Abuja, Miyogiri reports. I rolled out a seven-point agenda, uh, which is number one, the generation of big data. The need for geodata in the solid minerals sector is one of the top targets for the solid minerals minister, Dele Alake. And the task of providing this information is assigned to the Nigerian Geological Survey Agency. And the bulk of the challenge is before this man, the director general of the agency, Dr. Abruazak Gariba. Though he aids the agency, but the task of achieving this is a collective responsibility. This informed this gathering of foreign and local partners at the 2023 Forum of the Agency. For the Director General, there is need to re-emphasize the role of geodata if the mining and mental sectors must get it right. The economic diversification agenda of the present administration focuses on diversifying the nation's economy through the solid mineral sector. Now, it is very important 
to know that what role is the Nigerian Geological Survey going to play? And in doing this, we have to elucidate what have we been doing? How have we been complementing the efforts of the private sector? How do you know your mineral wealth? You must be able to now be able to have sessions like this to be able to now harness the professionals. Gathering geodata to explore the mineral wealth of a large country like Nigeria is a huge task. But key industry players are optimistic that the Nigerian Geological Survey Agency will achieve this goal considering the successes recorded in the National Integrated Minerals Exploration Project, NIMEP, that the agency superintended. Without the delivery from the uh, agency particularly, we might not be able to achieve the role that the uh, president has uh, actually mandated us to deliver. With the push coming from Dele Alake and the readiness demonstrated by the Nigerian Geological Survey Agency with its partners, the prospects in the solid mineral sector look bright. Mere Let's now see the closing figures for the week ended Friday 22nd of December 2023. Well, the federal government is plan to ramp up production of electric vehicles in the country is gaining momentum with more private players collaborating with the government to deploy 100 electric vehicles before the uh, second quarter of 2024 towards reducing the cost of transportation and achieving the net zero emission target. Director General of the National Automotive uh, Design and Development Council, uh, Joseph uh, or Sinai Pin uh, gave the indication while visiting an electric vehicle center in Abuja where the electric vehicle manufacturing company pledged to deploy an additional 50 electric vehicles taxes to complement the presidential compressed natural gas powered vehicles buses initiative. And we, we are trying to see how we can grow our local content component from the current state to minimum of 40%. And we can quickly achieve that by using the lithium we have in abundance here in Nigeria because battery alone contribute nothing less than 50% of the cost component of an EV. So if you can do the battery here in Nigeria, it means you have even attained the 50%. It's part of our goals as well to ensure that we reduce the price. That's why we need to encourage local manufacturing. Once we, once we um, are able to manufacture here, of course, we can significantly reduce our cost. And then, of course, there are certain work that um, the agency will have to do, like um, um, taxes, and if they can help us ease our taxes in the first few years um, so that more Nigerians can. But with the work we're currently doing, we can assure Nigerians that in a very short time, um, EVs will be more affordable for, for, um, for all Nigerians. Comfort Amadou reports that the federal government 
the just energy transition agenda is among other issues seeking to advance the 2016 net zero target by reducing dependence on petrol fuel vehicles, eliminating carbon emissions in the transport industry through mass production of electric vehicles and compressed natural gas powered vehicles in the country. Well, that's it. This is where we end this edition of Business Express. We value your feedback, so keep the comments, observations, and suggestions coming. Be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTS channel. Business Express returns Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. I'm Musa Bakar. Merry Christmas.